a highly accurate yet relatively unknown economic indicator is predicting GFC, Global Financial Crisis 2.0. I'm going to explain this to you in three simple, fast steps. Step number one, let's go over this recent event with the yield curve actually inverting. When most of you think of the yield curve inverting, you think of the treasury yield curve. So let's start there. We've got a chart going all the way back to 1980 to 2019. This is August 2019. On the left, we go from negative 2% up to a positive 2%. This simply shows us the difference between the yield on the 10-year treasury and the two-year treasury. So this is an indicator that historically has been 90% plus accurate. So when this inverts, meaning when the yield on the 10-year treasury goes below the yield on the two-year treasury, this is the bond market or the treasury market telling us, predicting that there is going to be a recession in the near future. So the first inversion we see on this chart goes back to 1980. And of course, we had a recession right after that. Then 1990, what followed? A recession. Then 2000, the dot-com bust. Then the GFC 1.0, 2007. And of course, we had 2019, August. And what happened in March of 2020? But I want to be very clear. What we're referencing in this chart is the treasury yield curve. What I'm talking about in this video is a completely separate yield curve. It's what nobody is talking about right now, except for my good friends Emil Kalinowski and Jeff Snyder. And this is the yield curve for the Euro dollar futures market. So what are Euro dollar futures? To understand this better, editor, let's go right to the internet. Okay, this is from one of my favorite websites, Investopedia. It says LIBOR and Euro dollars. The price of Euro dollar futures reflects the interest rate offered on US dollar denominated deposits held in banks outside of the United States. More specifically, the price reflects the market gauge of the three month US dollar LIBOR interest rate anticipated on the settlement date of the contract. And LIBOR is an abbreviation for London Interbank Offered Rate. LIBOR is a benchmark for short-term interest rates at which banks can borrow funds in the London Interbank market. Eurodollar futures are a LIBOR-based derivative reflecting the London Interbank Offered Rate for a three-month $1 million offshore deposit. So euro dollar futures are just basically predicting what they think the interest rate on LIBOR will be into the future. Now that we understand what euro dollar futures are, let's check out a chart that shows this yield curve just inverted last week. And according to Jeff Snyder, it has even more a predictive ability than the treasury market yield curve we were discussing earlier that is 90% plus accurate. This chart starts in September 2021, goes all the way to 2026. And this is predicting what the interest rate will be on three month LIBOR going into the future. So from now out five years. And as of December 1st, this blue line represents what that yield curve looked like. So three month LIBOR rates, the market is predicting that in 2023, there'll be roughly 1.5, 1.7%. On the left, we go from 1% up to 2%. But then what it was showing us is that the interest rates in 2024 or 2025 will be less than they are in 2023. So the further you go out the curve, the lower the interest rates go. 
This is an inversion in the euro dollar futures curve, just like the inversion we saw in the treasury market back in 1980, 90, 2000, GFC, and prior to the Cerveza sickness. Oh, but wait, there is more. Like I said earlier, this blue line represents what the market was predicting as of December 1st. But this is a very fluid curve. So Jeff Snyder points out that as of December 3rd, just two days later, it started to invert even more dramatically than it was on December 1st. We can see as of December 3rd, the interest rates 2023, right about 1.5%, then they go straight down into 2024, 2025, and they continue lower than they were in 2023, all the way out past 2026. So what this is predicting is that we will see a huge recession, if not depression globally, after 2023 going into 2024 and 2025, potentially right around the next election cycle for the president of the United States. Now, I know a lot of you right about now are trying to use this curve to predict inflation or deflation in terms of domestic consumer prices in the United States. And I would suggest resisting the temptation. Here's what I mean. When we look at an inversion in the euro dollar futures curve, what this is predicting specifically is a decrease in global economic activity. So this could be a blow up in emerging markets. It could be a stock market crash, or it could be just a broad based decline in overall economic output leading to a global recession if not depression. But remember, just because we have a global economic depression, it doesn't necessarily mean the prices of the stuff you buy on a daily basis goes down. We can have domestic prices going up while at the same time, the global economy is collapsing. Whoa, time out. I know many of you right now are asking yourself, boy, where did George's snappy looking collared shirt go for this video? Well, today I'm wearing none other than my Rebel Capitalist t-shirt. And I wore this t-shirt specifically to remind you that Rebel Capitalist Live is coming up January 7th to the 9th in Houston. So you gotta get your tickets now before we are sold out. We're gonna have incredible speakers such as Ron Paul, Chris Cole, Lynn Alden, Richard Werner, Robert Kiyosaki, just to name a few. So to check out the list of speakers and to get your tickets right now, check out rebelcapitalistlive.com. Step number two, lenders see an epic amount of risk. So much so, they're willing to actually lose money as long as the losses are defined. I'm going to explain that in just one moment. Before I do, let's look at a more detailed chart of what we looked at in step number one. This is the twos and the tens. In step number one, we looked at this going all the way back to the 1970s. Here, I want to focus on 2017 to today's date. This is the delta, the difference in yield between the two-year and the 10-year. So remember, in a healthy yield curve, the interest rates are higher as we go out in the future, which would make more sense because the longer you lend your money out, the more risk you have of not being paid back or being paid back in devalued dollars. We have to remember inflation. More on that in just a moment. On the left, we go from zero basis points up to 150 basis points of a difference between the 10-year and the two-year. In 2017, there was 150 basis point difference. What this is telling us is that the 10-year was 150 basis points or 1.5% higher than the yield on the two-year. But as we get closer to 2019, it starts to drop. And like we said earlier in step number one, in August of 2019, 
the yield curve actually inverted. So the yield on the two year was higher than the 10 year momentarily. But this predicted the recession that we saw in 2020 due to the government's response to the Cerveza sickness. It wasn't the Cerveza sickness, it was the government's response. But then the yield curve starts to steepen till we get to a point where it's at a more normal level. But look at what has happened recently. The yield curve has started to flatten again and flatten very, very quickly. And this gets very ominous when we consider what the euro dollar future curve has been telling us about 2023 through, let's say, 2025 or 2026. So this is flattening, meaning there's a greater probability of a recession in the next year or year and a half. Now, we haven't inverted, so it wouldn't go up to that 90% plus number that we saw in step number one. But as this gets flatter, the probability of a recession in the next year increases. While at the same time, the euro dollar futures curve is telling us that there's a high probability of us going into a global recession, if not depression, in 2023 and extending out to possibly 2026. So both markets are telling us they see a substantial increase in risk, not just for the next year, but the next two, three, maybe even four years into the future. So now that we understand what these markets are predicting, let's look at it through the lens of an investor when they have to consider consumer price inflation. We've got two investors, and I think we used them in the last whiteboard video. It's the average Joe, everyone's favorite, and his cousin, the seasoned pro. So the seasoned pro is here with his glasses so he can read his computer screen. He's got his top hat on indicating that he is very, very rich. And of course, like all hedge fund managers or seasoned pro, he is wearing an official fleece vest. But the seasoned pro has two options. If he is lending money to the government, or maybe he's a bank lending money for a long period of time, you've got different options. Well, you could lend that money to the government at, let's say, a 1.5% interest rate right now for a 10-year treasury yield, or you could lend that money to a business. You could invest it in a startup. Or if you're a bank, maybe you would lend that money out to an existing business that was trying to expand, buy more machinery to increase productivity, to create more goods and services, and increase economic output right here in the United States. So those are your two options. But if the seasoned pro is willing to lend money to the government, buy a treasury at 1.5% for 10 years, this tells us that they are willing to take a loss of purchasing power. Because the government right now is saying that the CPI about 6.2%. So let's just say it's 6.5%, where the euro dollar future curve is telling us that three month LIBOR in 2023 will be about 1.5%. And the 10 year currently is trading about 1.5%. So if you are that seasoned pro, then you are buying that treasury and you're taking a guaranteed loss of 5%. Because you're buying the treasury at 1.5, the CPI, as measured by the government, is at 6.5, so there's a delta of 5%. Why on earth would anyone that is smart enough to have a fleece vest accept a guaranteed loss of purchasing power of 5%. The answer is because he thinks his alternatives are even worse. So let's think this through. You've got a billion dollars that you cannot keep in a bank, you have to invest. So you could buy a treasury, a 10 year at 1.5% and accept at least a 5% loss, and who knows if that increases over the next 10 years if you hold that treasury to maturity, 
Or you could take that billion dollars and lend it to a business in the real economy, also buy stocks. So what the treasury market is telling us explicitly and the euro dollar future market is telling us implicitly is all these seasoned pro, the market participants that make up this curve are saying, listen, we would rather take this defined loss because we think the risk of lending it to a business in the real economy or buying stocks is so much greater because of the turbulence, the economic turbulence we see coming down the road. And if these curves continue to flatten while the level of inflation or consumer prices stays relatively high, it's the seasoned pros telling us, hey, average Joe, you need to really keep your eyes open because the probability of us going into a recession or even a global depression is increasing by the day. Step number three. So we know these economic indicators are predicting that global economic activity is going to decline. But why? Why is economic output going to go down so dramatically in the future, or at least predicted by the euro dollar future market and potentially right now the treasury market? So let's put all the pieces of the puzzle together and get into the nuance of really what we may see play out into the future. So the first thing I think these two indicators are telling us is that global governments are going to have more lockdowns, more mandates, more restrictions, and more regulation. That means you will have less freedom, less liberty, and we will see far less free market capitalism. This means government-created economic distortions. When you have the government creating this level of economic distortions, the only thing you should expect is less economic activity. But it doesn't stop there. Let's go over to the Federal Reserve, Jerome Powell. What's going on right now at the Fed? Well, they're kind of between a rock and a hard place. They've painted themselves into a corner. Why? Because we see consumer price inflation domestically in the United States going up, the latest print, 6.2%. And Jerome Powell himself came out the other day and said that they need to drop the term transitory. So this is becoming a big problem in the United States. The CPI going up, especially for the politicians, it doesn't look good. And it's very unlikely they get reelected if the CPI is going up to 6%, 7%, 8%, 10%. So the Fed only has one way to fight the inflation. It's to reduce the quantitative easing and eventually start raising interest rates. In fact, the market or Goldman Sachs is predicting the Fed is going to raise interest rates three times in 2022. So let's assume they do raise interest rates three times in 2022, while at the same time decreasing quantitative easing to zero dollars a month. What does that do to asset prices? They absolutely tank. Well, if asset prices, meaning the real estate market, the stock market, if that tanks, the real economy is going to go down with it. Why? Because our economy now is so financialized, the real economy is completely dependent upon these asset bubbles. So if they deflate, if they crash, the real economy is going to crash as well. But let's peel back another layer of the onion. What's happening in China right now with Evergrande? They are going bust. So is Fantasia and most likely other real estate companies. And the real estate market makes up for 20 to 30 percent of Chinese GDP. If they go into a huge recession, that means they're importing less. If they import less, they export fewer dollars. Because let's remember, globally, about 60% of the transactions are actually settled in dollars, even if the United States isn't involved in the transaction whatsoever. So if we have fewer dollars coming out of China, that means there's less dollar cash flow to service the dollar-denominated debt for country XYZ, ABC, 123, and 321. 
So they have less dollar cash flow, meaning they're short on dollars, to pay their dollar denominated debt, which according to the IMF, we're gonna get there in just a moment, their debts are at all time highs. But this is just the beginning of their problem. Because let's remember that the Fed is increasing interest rates, which makes their borrowing costs in the future for those dollars most likely a lot higher. So if they have to roll over their debt or if they need more dollar denominated liquidity, they're going to have to pay an even higher interest rate, which makes that burden even more unbearable and a crash with these emerging market countries even more likely into the future. Again, something that could be picked up right now by the euro dollar future curve and potentially the treasury curve that we saw in step number two. So for a moment, let's say the Federal Reserve does increase interest rates and we see a huge recession or economic depression in China. Where do these countries go to get the dollar liquidity they need at a lower interest rate? There's only one game in town. That's the IMF, the global elite. So we'd have this guy who is not your drunk, insolvent Uncle Sam, by the way. Oh no, because we have to remember that these countries have drunk political leaders as well, and they are just as insolvent. So this is your drunk, insolvent Uncle Sam's political leader cousin. <laughs> and that is insolvent Uncle Scam, because Uncle Scam is scamming his people out of all their money through inflation and taxes and scamming them out of their freedom and liberty, just like our drunk, insolvent Uncle Sam is scamming us today in the United States. But Uncle Scam goes to the IMF and says, IMF, we need dollar liquidity. And the IMF looks at drunk, insolvent Uncle Scam with country XYZ, ABC, 123 and 321 and says, okay, we'll give you the dollar liquidity you need, but we have conditions. So to understand the leverage that the IMF has even better, editor, let's go right to the internet. This is an article from Barron's that just came out December 3rd. The title, Emerging Markets Will Need Help When a Debt Crisis Comes. Not if, but when. The pandemic has taken a particularly heavy toll on the emerging market economies. Not only did these economies suffer deep economic recessions, high unemployment rates, they also found their public finances were highly compromised. According to the IMF, never before have the emerging market economies been so indebted as they are today. We've got to remember that these emerging market economies, they couldn't afford to send out stimmy checks. They can't do PPP like we can here in the United States because they don't have the global reserve currency. Moving on. And seldom before have their budget deficits and their gross financing needs been as large as they are today. Unfortunately for the emerging market economies, it must be only a matter of time before the music of ample global dollar liquidity stops playing. This could occur either because the world's major central banks are forced to raise interest rates, we just talked about that with the Fed, to curb inflation, which is now running at multi-decade highs. Alternatively, it could occur because the new scariant mutation might prove to be very much more transmissible and medicine-resistant than was the past scariant, we'll call it, <laughs> to keep it YouTube-friendly. If that indeed turned out to be the case, it could stop the global economic recovery in its tracks. And they didn't even reference what's happening in China. So the bottom line there is far less dollar cash flow to service the dollar denominated debts they have, which are at all time highs. So then this article goes on to state who could ride in on their white horse and save the day. The IMF was called upon to play a major role in resolving previous world economic crises, including the Asian currency crisis, European sovereign debt crisis, with all the clues now pointing to an early drying up of global dollar-denominated liquidity, and with the emerging market economies indebted more than ever, we will once again need the IMF. 
And it's not just barons that realizes that. Trust me, it's all these other countries globally that need access to that dollar liquidity. So what is the IMF doing in response to this crisis, which is not a matter of if, but only a matter of when? Well, let's look at this article from CNBC. The title, IMF urges the Fed to speed up monetary policy tightening amid mounting inflation fears. You see what's happening here, guys? If you're not, don't worry about it. We're going to go back to the whiteboard right now, and I'm going to connect the dots for you. So the IMF goes to the Federal Reserve and says, hey, you guys really need to raise interest rates because CPI there, whew, it's really getting out of hand. And they're doing this pretending to be the expert, the good guy. But they know darn well that that gives them far more leverage over these countries that need the dollar liquidity. So what are these conditions we were talking about before? Well, in my opinion, those conditions most likely are more lockdowns, more mandates, more restrictions, more regulation. Because they know that this creates economic distortions, which lowers economic activity and economic output. Why would the IMF want to do this? Because the lower economic output these countries have, or the global economy has, the more leverage it's going to give them to create more conditions for these countries and the globe in the future. So when you start to look at the events we're seeing play out in the world today in 2021, and you look at those events through the lens of these global elite trying to usurp more power, more control, and more money, it all starts to make sense. So the main takeaway here is the euro dollar future curve, this unknown, highly accurate economic indicator is not only predicting the next global financial crisis, I think maybe even more importantly, it's predicting a global freedom crisis. For more content that'll help you build wealth and thrive in a world of out of control central banks, and big governments. Check out this playlist right here, and I will see you on the next video.